Well, here we are in Montreal, Canada. And of course, we just met recently in Sacramento, in California. But maybe what you can do first is tell people your name. Uh, my name is Dennis Kolzak. OK. Dennis, um, tell me a little bit about how you got uh, into anthroposophy, how, how your biography maybe as far as being born and what kind of parents you had, and were there certain uh, points in your life where you kind of knew that you could either go this way or that way, mm. life-changing okay. situations, just in broad okay. spectrum? Yeah, I was born in Pennsylvania, um, 1945. So uh, my birthday is in July, right before they dropped the bomb on Japan. Okay. So I, we would say anthroposophically, I saw that from the spiritual world. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and that was the end of the war. Okay. Your parents? Uh, my parents were very young uh, when they got married, and um, I was part of a family with three boys. My father was a butcher, blue collar worker, my mother was a housewife. And I grew up in Philadelphia, and then when I was around nine years old, we moved out of the city because there were sort of race riots were starting to happen in the city. My parents wanted to get out. So we moved to the suburbs and um, in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey and had a nice childhood, but money was tight and it was after the war and, you know, uh, suburban New Jersey, 1950s kind of thing. So uh, we bought an old house. My father bought an old house. So the house was always torn up. Uh, one thing or another, this wall was missing. This floor was not in the kitchen for a summer, stuff like that. Things were changing. Yeah, things were a lot of changes. And, uh, and then as I grew older, um, it, I grew up in a Polish family, both sides Polish, and the idea was you need to work for a living. So I was 10 years old, I got my first job, mm -hmm. and I've been working ever since, and uh, that's been very good. Mm -hmm. So we had to work hard, and we didn't have much money, so um, I went to the local high school, but then when I went to college, that was sort of unheard of. My father had five brothers and three sisters. My mother had two brothers. Nobody in the family ever went to college before. So I was the first one to go mm -hmm. to college and we didn't have any money. So I had to kind of wash dishes and mm -hmm. work construction. There was no such thing as student loans at those days. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Very little. No, yeah, so yeah. I was lucky though. I went to a state college and the tuition was doable but I had to kind of scrounge around for food. So I learned kind of to be self-sufficient. Yeah. And that was very good. So, so this going to college happened at 18, like 18, around 17, yeah, 18? 17, 18. That's the first moon note, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And that was great for me because I didn't like high school. Mm -hmm. It was too, it seemed senseless. But when I got to college, I was an art major. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the professors I had were very alive, and the, uh, the, I finally encountered the world of ideas. There you go. And that just really did it for me. I remember walking out of my first cl class going, this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. So four years, and then that was Vietnam, was uh, on yes. the horizon. Right. And I graduated from uh, a teacher's college. I have a undergraduate was a teaching degree in art, art education, mm -hmm. uh, but I was in a draft board in New Jersey where there were a lot of criminals, and so right out of college I got drafted into the army, and it was the height of the war, mm -hmm. and my father was in the Navy in the Second World War and said, why don't you go talk to the Navy recruiter, and the short story is I ended up on a nuclear submarine in the yeah. Navy for a couple yeah. of years and got a very good education in 
mechanics and elect electrical and stuff like that, but I didn't like it at all. The social part underneath in a nucleus. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. So, in other <clears> words, <throat> experiences with other soldiers and everybody. They, they were up. okay, but it was two two months underwater. Unbelievable. Eh? Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, so that I got out of that and then got a job. Uh, then I went to graduate school, and um, suddenly for fine arts. And suddenly I was back in a learning environment again, mm -hmm. and uh, that was great. Mm -hmm. And then I got a fellowship for teaching, and then I got a job teaching in a community college right out of graduate school, and I did there for seven years, and I met my wife mm -hmm. in graduate school. And then we moved to California because our children needed uh, more Around friends. about what age were you when that happened? <clears throat> I think I was about 25 or 26 when we decided to go, 27, Yeah. when we decided to go. In other words, once you were almost, almost incarnated. <laughs> yes, yeah, almost totally incarnated. Yeah, right. And then again, it was race riots mm -hmm. in New Jersey, uh -huh. in the place where we lived. And it, it was the same type of thing, a very deep civil unrest. So we decided to go to California, or actually Oregon, for uh, a year. Uh, I took a leave of absence and then went back, and then we got mugged in a state park in New Jersey when I wanted to go back. And we looked at each other, and my wife said, why are we... This is not the place to raise this children. This is not the place to raise children. So I turned around, I just had driven across the country, I turned around and drove back, put them on a plane, mm -hmm. and uh, went to Rudolf Steiner College. Ah, that's how you ended up there. Yeah. So you ended up at Rudolf Steiner College at 28 or something? 28, yeah, 29. Wow. And um, had been sort of reading a little bit of biodynamic, which mm -hmm. was since my door was through biodynamics. Ah, yeah. And through Goethe, Goethe my master's thesis in uh, graduate school was Goethe's color theory. Oh, okay. But I knew nothing about anthroposophy. And then, just as I met my wife, um, I started getting biodynamic books. And then we were living in New Jersey, and she said, I wonder if Rudolf Steiner ever wrote anything about education. Mm, oh, yes, of course. Yeah, so, well, what did we know, you know? Yeah. So, I, so we got the books on education, and was like, wow, mm -hmm. this is great. And so then when the riots began, we said, we got to get out of here. It was yeah. too crazy. So we went to a Waldorf school in Eugene. My, my oldest son had his kindergarten there. Okay. And then we were going to drive back and go back to New Jersey, but we got mugged, so we decided I'm going to be a Waldorf teacher. So we went back to California and um, got a little house, rented a house with the kids, and one thing led to another, to another, to another. I, I got my teacher training, but I still didn't, wasn't a Walter teacher, I was a specialty teacher. Mm -hmm. And I taught blocks in uh, weather and plant. Oh yes, uh, of course, it was the weather that yeah. where your fir first books came yeah. from. Yeah, I did figure right. drawing in the high school and a couple other blocks. And uh, then I met a lady from Japan who saw my artwork, I was supporting myself doing woodcuts, she mm -hmm. saw it, she said, well, you should be showing. Yeah. And I said, well, I tried, but it's not good. So she said, come to Japan. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so we packed up 30 paintings and sent them on a ship to Japan and then followed them a couple months later and had a show in Japan. I sold all the paintings. Wow. 30 paintings. There you go. And uh, made money and we traveled in Japan for a month and a half. It was incredible. I had a feeling like I was going home. And then we came back and started a program at the college for Japanese students. Uh -huh. And she and I worked together. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Uh, uh, Yuko Omura. Okay. And we did that for a year. And then the American students on campus in Sacramento said, well, hey, what about us? Yeah. So the second year we did Japanese students and American students together, but it was a difficult year because the Japanese students kept saying, slow down, slow down. And the Americans yes, said, give me more, up. give me more. Yeah, yeah speed up. 
So we split the program, mm -hmm. and that became then consciousness studies, or Gertian studies, studies. we called it. What, what, what year was that? How old were you at that point? Oh, gee, I think I was in my 30, 34, 30, approaching 35. my second moon. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, that was a rough time mm -hmm. for us, because we didn't have any money. Yeah. And then, then my wife got a job. She got teacher training. She got a job in the Waldorf School for daycare so we could pay for the education for our for children. For the children, yeah. And uh, she was making money. And then I slowly worked my way to the college. And then I was able to have an income. Mm -hmm. And then by that time, we had three boys who were growing. Hungry. Yeah, and hungry and eating a lot. And so I had a big garden. And we Five, approaching my second moon node, and then um, I had studied Goethe. I had done illustrations for Goethe's Metamorphosis of Plants mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. I wrote uh, a book on biodynamic gardening back when I was in New Jersey. So I just started writing, and mm -hmm. um, books started appearing, and alchemy and things. And my class, I really thank the college for giving me the opportunity to kind of un unfold my destiny there without, mm -hmm. without a lot of uh, over uh, requ requirements that I teach a certain way. Yeah, yeah. So, so you I had to teach the way out of how you understand and how you are working yes, with it. Yes, yeah. And uh, I really thank them for that. So they, they yeah. really allowed me to do that. And then more and more students came. One time, one year we had like 60 people. Wow. So it, was, it seemed to be meeting a need. Yeah. And, uh, but I was teaching... Oh Without God. any certificate? Yeah. Without any kind of yeah. graduate? no carrot. Any, no yeah. carrot at the end of the stick? Yeah. And the, the, everybody said, who's going to come to this? There's no carrot. But yeah. It, was it a, didn't matter. It didn't matter. People want to learn, they and it doesn't because papers don't really... I always say uh, they really wanted to make, uh, find a way to meet Rudolf Steiner. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they still... Yeah, it's still it's happening still, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell yeah. me a little bit about the books. Um, like the first one was about whether I understand. Uh, actually, the first one was called The Book of Moons. Mm -hmm. It was a biodynamic book. It was a lot of poetry and woodcuts and things. It was meant to be kind of like an old uh, Almanac chapbook, or something. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but. It, and that was published by the BD Association, and then it came Weather and Cosmos. Mm -hmm. It was about the weather, and it was just at that time I was starting my study on uh, planetary motion and weather. Mm -hmm. That has been I've been doing that for thirty years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, really, all the, that's a really the backbone of your, all your studies. That's the backbone of my of my reigning in my imagination. Yeah, the des you're oh, the, finding yeah. your destiny in such a way that it has, it's like regular. you were saying, you, have, you know, the regular. first thing that happens in embryology is that you get the backbone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have to, I've had, found that I had to have rigor. I, I have a good imagination, but I, but I had to train it. Mm -hmm. So uh, Goethe helped greatly yeah. in that. So yeah. the drawings for the metamorphosis, then... Uh, on the travels back and forth, I spent a year doing watercolor paintings of rock faces while I read Walter Clues, The Living Earth. Mm -hmm. So I got an education in geology. Mm -hmm. uh, my the tr submarine training was a training in mechanics, so I had a, a good technical Some training. Some similarities with Frank Chester there, with art yeah, and yeah. with uh, yeah. understanding machinery. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, I'm not a real machinist, though. Frank was a, a real draftsman. Yeah, yeah. And um, my work was much more painting yeah. and drawing. But then I got dragged into geometry and projective geometry. Uh, it, was, um, it was a book, was um, uh, the Sears Handbook. No, it was... Uh, Gee, one of so one of the books, books is, I think, the C.S. Handbook. Uh, was uh, Jennifer Blatchford, uh, Blatchford helped no, you. No, that was the other one. It was um, Seeking Spirit Vision. Right. She helped okay. Me. Yeah. 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 And that's an alchemical book. So yeah. I started studying alchemy. Yeah. She and studied with me and you're with me. Oh actually. yeah, she's yeah. a dear. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we we both kind of slogged through that one. 
<laughs> through the Sierra Sandbook mm -hmm. or through uh, Seeking Spirit Vision. Mm -hmm. It was very alchemical, it was very mm -hmm. complex. And then people read that and said, well, it's kind of complex, can you do something else? So then came uh, the Sierra's the handbook. handbook. And then I gave lectures to the teachers, that's knowledge teaching on the death of Mysterious. Then came weather book. So and, all that, that must have been all around 37, the second moon? Oh, moon, I've, been later? Writing, I've been writing all along. All along. All along. I never sit down to write a book. Did something special happen to, at the second uh, moon node at 37? Um, I got very sick. Huh. Yeah, I got very sick. I've always had uh, health struggles my whole life with allergies and things like that. In other and words, uh, you were sensitive to foods that aren't really food foods. Food and petrochemicals and God. You know. Well, you were also in California. You have more. Do you have more pollution there than you know? No, it was stuff like polyvinyl chloride, which is every stuffing of every chair on right. every airplane in of the world. Of course, you know? yes, so yes, yeah. It was stuff like that. Yeah. And in other dairy, words, dairy unnatural, and unnatural fabrics and and and, and dairy and wheat. And, mm -hmm. and By that know. time, like I say, food wasn't food anymore, anyways. No. That's right. So, so then came gardening. Yeah. So, S yeah, so biodynamics again. Right. So I've been a gardener for 40 years and uh, I've done a lot of botany and alchemical study of plants. And then came the medical lectures by Rudolf Steiner, a lot of uh, neurology. I've studied neurology and embryology and a lot of ologies along the way, botany and meteorology. And, and the children grew up and uh, went their own way, and uh, yeah. here you are. Yeah, <laughs> and they're, they're my, um, my oldest son is a software consultant at a very high-end um, firm that does um, HMO software things for HMOs and m large medical operations. He's a partner in a firm works with the CEO of the firm in strategic planning mm -hmm. uh, for software and for computers. My middle son is an art director, soon to be a director at Pixar. Mm -hmm. He's in his 30s, so it's mm -hmm. amazing. And my other son is a software HTML web developer. <laughs> uh, and we never had a TV. No, they don't and, need that uh, when they're children. And I never had a computer until they said, Dad, you have to have uh, one. You have to have one in right. order for, to do your weather work. And of course, your son is the one that sends out the audio yeah. tapes. Uh, yeah, that's of ben. course, that's Sorry. how I kind of met him. Right, so he, he does his design. So they're all in that realm, but they all uh, have incredible imagination, and they're all being given tasks uh, that require social adeptness. Who, who were the teachers in the Waldorf School? Um, Some that you can remember. Yeah, Inge Schneider was Ben's teacher. Mark Murray was Stefan's teacher, the old one, and Patrick Wickford Evans uh -huh. was, the, was yeah. Noah's teacher in the middle. But the real teacher was my wife. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. It, it, maybe you can mention her name for me. Yeah, Barbara Klosak. She was a kindergarten teacher in the Waldorf School in the Red Rose for 25 years. Yeah. And uh, I credit her with their social capacity. She's an amazing woman. And uh, she's an artist in her own right. I met her in graduate school. She has exactly. a fine so art, a MFA in pottery. Mm -hmm. And uh, very artistic. She does a lot of pastels and painting, but she's a gifted um, mother. We mm -hmm. had all our children at home, there we except go. the first one. Yeah. And, uh, I delivered Ben because the did you? wife was late. Could you know. You, did you know that Frank also delivered all three of his children? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think that's so, that's so necessary. A, a, that's a very special yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So And she's uh, uh, just a beautiful and gifted heart person. So I credit her, and, the, and now she, we have three